good afternoon all. Good morning, good evening for those of you who are online. I would like to thank you all for attending a year that we had many meetings, many events that were not held, but now we are able to have it both live meetings and also online. So I would like to thank you all for your effort of being here. When we get home, there is a huge list of emails that we have to answer. So I am very happy and thank you for attending. And it's also very nice to meet again friends that we have not seen for some time. I try to have a retrospective when we had the first sparkle that brought us to today. This was the first week that I was at Agropastorio Pascual Campanelli. He invited me to come and see the structure. They didn't have any animals. He had already closed the first trial. And on Wednesday or Thursday, this was in 2019. We have some people from a company called ICC trying to establish a partnership, uh, experimental partnership with them. And on Saturday, most of those working at the farm had already left for the weekend. I was a researcher that had to establish the structure for the experimental activities. And it's very difficult when you are working in governmental agencies, as I was at the time. It was very difficult. Sometimes you had to pay yourself for things that you need for a high quality research. And as a researcher, I thought, well, if this does not work, uh, this whole structure depends, the truck, perhaps I will be able to, to pay for the pens, but my grandson will have to pay for the truck. I was thinking about this on Saturday. And then on Saturday, some of the ICC team came to talk to me and it was raining, there was a lot of mud and we had to make a visit throughout the experimental unit. There were no animals, only the structure. And then Glyco asked me a few questions. And I was thinking, we have to close this deal or things will be difficult for me. And then he, he said, I know what you want, what you want. You want to, to own the truth as well. But how, how come are you the researcher, the leader? No, I own the company. So this became even worse for me. And he said, if you, you want to own the truth, because I've never seen a place like this where the scientific rigor and the possibility of having so many researchers or trials being repeated here. We don't have an infrastructure like this elsewhere in Brazil. So I would like to thank the ICC team and it's a great pleasure to see what that talk we had or that chat we had on Saturday generated all of this. And now, talking about the topic of this presentation, I have to recognize that it was a change in the paradigm, in the mindset as research to <clears throat> carry out a trial with yeast and to study all over again about yeast. Andre as well, he also provoked me two weeks ago. ago he, they call me Don to have trials with yeast, show the results that you are showing, this is a change in mindset. And I'm telling you this because I was able to follow from the beginning the generation 
of results. And I, I don't want to mention that I per took part in a trial with yeast in 2008. And then people who were talking about live yeasts, that there was an improvement in fiber digestion, how important is this in a feedlot, the reduction of ruminal oxygen. At the time, there was not a selection of the different strains. And at the time, people would ask, who's going to review this paper on yeast? And people got crazy. For some, it worked, but for others, it didn't. But we didn't know why some trials worked out and others did not. <laughs> In 2010, 2012, more or less, I went to PNC and for I was very surprised. The Great Plains Nutrition, there's a meeting where they have the academia, researchers and the industry. And I was very surprised that half of the papers were related to yeast, inactivated yeast, yeast fractions. Then I saw the light and things are changing. We can talk about yeast in nutrition for ruminants, especially in feedlots. Another meeting, we were evaluating a thesis, and it's important to work with in different areas, different areas of knowledge, but everyone moving to the same point. And there was a, a food engineer that was specialized in baking and beer. And then he was asking, will it flocculate or will it settle down? And I thought, well, we have to study a lot. When is a nutritionist going to ask a question like this from then on? The number of trials are incre increasing and with positive results. <laughs> to make this presentation, I read two reviews, 2013 and 2021. The studies in 20. 08, this was more related to, to swine. And when you are about uh, reviewing the literature, 90% of the papers now are related to ruminants, feedlots, and also dairy cattle with positive results. <laughs> so I am going to tell you again that this was an incredible learning opportunity and having the chance to make this presentation to you. What about the rhythm? I will try not to use much slang or the interpreters will want to kill me. What are the topics that we are going to talk about? Overview of the Grupo Campanelli, how we go about the trials, what we do different from other places in terms of research, results of rumen yeast in large pen trial, and also the results of rumen yeast in a experiment, a trial with Intergado. They were both held at approximately the same time. The history of our group, the Campanelli group started in 1982, an Italian family that migrated to work with coffee crops. And in 1982, they set up the company. And some 20 years ago, 26 years ago, in the farm that now is the feedlot, it was prepared for orange production. 
and at the time of harvesting, they had the disease, very severe disease, and they were not able to harvest a single orange. Unfortunately for them, for them, and fortunately for us, they decided to raise cattle in a more professional way. So you can see that the years history is always thinking about a produ about being a producer focusing on technology from the very beginning when they started raising cattle 2017 techno beef was set up to meet the needs of the feedlot it gets to a point in your scale that it's important to have some different products formulas that will meet the needs of a feedlot. So we started meeting the needs of the feedlot of our farm, the Agropastoril Pascual Campanelli. And now, fortunately, we are one of the players in the market. 2019, we set up the Campanelli Innovation Center and have been holding trials since then. And since 2021, Techno Beef was modified, new people were hired, they acquired more specific equipments, and the rest is history. What is our expertise of the Campanelli Group? We have sugarcane, they are very efficient when we talk about sugarcane, production of grains focused on animal feeding, feedlot, production, or pro producing products for animal feeding, and now the development and validation of technology. What makes Grupo Campanelli different? The synergistic way in that they deal with the operations. We can see that crops and feedlot have some syner syn synergy. We always say that one plus one is equal three. We use the, the residue of sugarcane in animal feeding. We also use the animals waste for composting that is taken to the crops. What are the gains? The fact that we use this for some time composting, it will reduce 30 to 40% the use of fertilizers. In the event post-war, where the prices of fertilizers went very high, this helps us to, uh, to make our system survive. The Campanelli operation shown as figures. We expect to have 100,000 animals in the feedlot. We feedlot, we have grow out 35,000 animals. We are intend to expand it. We don't have the, the calves yet. 20,000 hectares for sugarcane and a new project, and 4,400 hectares with corn. We are also starting with sorghum, and the corn is only to produce feed. Another point <clears throat> that makes us different is that the management is done. Everything that you can measure is measured. Every operation are daily monitored, and we have here all the data. We have daily evaluation, the monitoring of feed intake, and now in the studies that we have organized, we also started monitoring the climate variables. And 
they are very important. The leftovers, the errors in loading. So the whole farm is in the cell phone, so to speak. In Technobeef, as I explained before, what is different, its focus is in the personalization of the products. The whole structure is to meet the demands, specific demands. So we formulate customized feeds. So imagine company focused on quality and investing in technology, the innovation center was a natural result. Today is the largest research facility in Latin America, and most of the studies conducted at our center are to validate feed additives. We work with nutrition management, we work with animal welfare, technologies aimed to livestock 4.0 for using cameras, using monitoring devices. And another important focus of research is heat stress. So we have integration of all areas of animal science. So I'm a nutritionist, we have Jessica, we have climatologies, animal welfare experts like Professor Chiquitelli. So we always try to see all aspects of one problem. I had I was fortunate to work with people starting to work in Mato Grosso, and they told me, you can only see the elephant when you are no longer below the elephant. It's like a cloud. Uh, and the same happened with heat stress. Everyone knew it was a problem. People talked about heat stress, however, we weren't able to measure the impact of heat stress in the pro Brazilian production chain. We studied heat stress and we saw effects of up to four kilos of weight loss according to the genetic background of the animals. So we are developing the heat stress index from 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.2, the lower the index, the lower the heat stress. The higher the number, the higher the level of heat stress. So this is what we are doing, just a few examples, trying to project, trying to anticipate the heat stress days. So you can, follow the trend and you can see, oh, tomorrow we are going to have a high level of heat stress. So basically this curve tells you that whenever we have higher levels of heat stress, the feed intake is reduced. So opposite direction. So whenever you have leftovers in the feed bank, we, it's, we can measure the level of heat stress according to the intake of the animals. So very soon we'll be able to share the results with you. What is our mission at our center? To conduct applied studies, to validate and develop new technologies, and especially to provide consultants, producers, and researchers with relevant tools and relevant information. This, and as the example I mentioned of the heat stress. And another important point in our mission is 
to contribute for a better positioning of Brazil in the technical and scientific arena. So improving the image that our livestock industry has in the international scenario to promote Brazilian research. When we built the center, people told us, no, you are going to compete with the universities. And it's exactly the opposite. We work in partnership with the university. So all the trials, we had partners from the university with us. And another, another important point is that we can have partnerships with different universities. And this is a weakness of our research system. So we establish synergies between different universities. And what is the concept? We have large pens, large pens with large number of animals, because it's a real simulation of what happens in the commercial feedlots. So we have incidents of pneumonia, of uh, hoof problems, and we also have cases of bullying. We lost two animals this week, one broke, a leg and the other died because he was bullied by the others. So simulating real life situations and also allows for a higher statistical power. The larger the animal, the number of animals, the uh, higher the statistical power technologies that could be considered to be ineffective in smaller trials can show the positive effects. So we can conduct two simultaneous trials. The first one with 1,700 animals in large pen, and the second with 96 animals in the intergado system. So we have 32 pens with 55 animals and 24 four pens for 24 animals in the smaller system. So all the structure is based on multiples of four. We are always testing for treatments per trial, showing how careful we are. So our large pens are equivalent to half the size of a commercial pen. We have total control of the treatments. We have, uh, we are paying attention to every detail. Intergado system is a smaller experimental unit. In this unit, the animals are the experimental unit. So we, for each treatment, we can to have 24 repetitions. We monitor individual feed intake, individual feed consumption, uh, water consumption. So in summary, in the large pens, we measure the potential of economic return of technology, simulating the real life situation. In the intergado system, the smaller, experimental units, we try to identify the biological effects of the technologies. So talking about the scientific rigor, we conduct the trials. In this type of condition, statistics may work in your favor or not. So if you start to study with 
without paying attention to the details. If you start already with different groups of animals, you are not going to be able to analyze properly the results. So we are very careful in sorting the animals, selecting the animals, to, to allocate the animals to the treatment groups, to the control group, and we have to be very careful in the selection of the animals as to avoid disparities at, when starting the trials. This was is the example of one of our trials. Each color represents a block. We have to work with weight ranges. It color, each color it's a block, each letter is a pen. So you see that within each color, we have differences between pens. And within blocks in the same pen, a difference of just 100 grams in weight. It's almost a war operation. So, and this takes many days to set up the trial. Every 15 minutes, we measure the feed intake, we control the fasting, so we weigh the animals, all animals after 16 hours of fasting, so it means that at 2 a.m. in during the night, there are people taking the feed out of the feed bank to fast the animals for 16 hours. Another important point is that we, uh, we do not work with the feeding volume because we cannot eliminate the effect of people analyzing the bunk. So in our feedlot, we weigh everything that is provided to the animals every day. Every morning, two People go collect the leftovers and weigh the leftovers. We also test all the inputs. We measure dry matter, in, both in the feed, both in the leftovers. So we have very reliable information as to the intake of the animals. Another important point, we know we work with people, we have Sundays, we have holidays, not everyone is in a good mood every day. And each pen is identified with a small tank. If the driver feeds the wrong pen, uh, signal is emitted, this is identified, and our central system emits a warning sign because ensuring the reliability of the results. This is important. Another important point is The cleaning of the truck, as we work with actives and between one batch and the other, we clean the truck completely as to prevent cross-contamination. So we really care for every small detail as to provide reliable information to the customer. Animals are also prepared for the trials. Entre, 
You see the level of effort. We start with 2,500 animals to select 1,700. They are all weighed on pasture. They are getting a maintenance diet to standardize uh, room and microbiota. We receive animals from different sources. We have to reset their digestive systems because otherwise we'll be measuring the effects of the previous life of the animal. So we keep the animals on a maintenance diet for 20 to 40 days. They are weighed on pasture, then they are undergo a fasting period of 16 hours. They are weighed again. We select them according to the life weight and the allocation of the animals takes seven to 12 days because we have to fast the animals. We have to sort the animals. We have to identify each box, we have to allocate the animals to the to the pens, and this is why it takes seven to twelve days to start the trial. The Americans they block every every day per day, and why can they do that? Because they use hormones, they use beta agonists, so when according to variation coefficient, coefficient of variation, they start with a initial weight of 8%. And I explained, uh, I explained here, we see a high variation in genetics. We don't use hormones, so, but they use beta agonists and hormones. So another detail is like in, we have four treatments and four blocks per line trying to eliminate the effect of location on the site. So we are careful in preventing all environmental effects. So in this trial, we had a positive control with sodium monans in rumen yeast. 7 grams per head per day, 650 milligrams per kilo of dry matter. And the company decided to test two products as well. We cannot tell which products are, but however, we, the animals were treated. The product was mixed in the premix, mineral premix, large pens, 44 Nelor uh, steers, and 11 crossbred animals per pen, and the intergarden, the smaller trial design, 19 Nelori, and the other, cross, the other crossbred animals. Diets. Acclimation, 14 days, plus two transition days, growth, 20 days, and finishing. As the animals will block at starting the trial, the heavier animals stay less time in the feedlot, the lighter stay longer. This is why we see a variation in days of feeding the finishing diet. Intergado, 71 days in the finishing diet. The ingredients that were used, so sugarcane hay, silage, sugarcane silage, snaplage, corn silage, citrus pulp, cotton seed, meal, 
molasses, urea, and mineral premixes. So we always try to include byproducts as in this trial, ICC asked us to use a little bit of starch, more starch. We, our diet contained 29% starch. So this diet has 29% starch. It's a safe diet if you don't have any problems, but the typical diet, if there is a management problem, animals might have uh, uh, ruminoacidosis because we have sugarcane molasses, soybean molasses, and if the, the animals are lighter at first, the diet might look safe. However, we know that it might cause problems if we have management issues. The large pen trials, the performance results, what we see that the final adjusted life weight carcass yield times final weight according to the weight gain. And that we believe this is the best way of comparing because we have animals weighing different weights and this is a way of balancing. So final life weight, we saw a four kilo additional weight gain, adjusted weight gain, 33 grams. These are the results for rumen yeast. For the additive, we have not seen significant effects on feed intake, in kilos per day, percentage of life weight, total consumption per stage for growth and finishing, and the same applied to feed conversion rates or feed deficiency. As to health, it was difficult to assess health effects because we have 3.77% morbidity in this trial. It's totally different from what we see in the US. They have 15 to 20% because of the high level of stress. And what really caught my attention, I don't think it's a coincidence, but the animals of the control group we saw almost twice as much hoof problems. It's not laminitis, it's like food rot, uh, directly related to the quality of the environment. So animals, when they were shipped to slaughter, this was the study with a better response, better performance, the pictures are not showing the, the amazing quality of these animals. As to carcass quality, I believe one thing is important to mention. As we always monitor the number of bruises on the carcasses. So each animal Going to slaughter, we calculate the bruising score. So, and these differences are easily eliminated when when the when the animals when the carcasses are clean. So we assess all the carcasses one 
driver that is not well trained, one problem at the packing plant, at when animals arrive, this can destroy the results you got. So more than 10,000 animals were slaughtered in this trial. So monitor at least once for the each one of the clients, the bruising score is the problem happening on the farm, is the problem happening at the arrival of the packing plant. And you might be surprised surprised by the results. Control group, here we have it. We, again, a trend of 0. 0.6. There was also an increase by the carcass, 20 grams, and also the yield, 0. 0.84. Rumen yeast provided two kilos more of carcass. But you had a structure like this, and you want to tell me about only two kilos of carcass and a statistical trend. We have our committee, and based on the return on investment 0.9 and lower, we know we can discuss if this is going to be adopted in our feedlot. We just finished a study that had exactly the same difference in carcass weight, less than 2.5 kilos, but we had twice as many animals. This P.6 went down to 0.3. That is why from the very beginning, we use these points as decision making. Now, comparing the hot weight, the carcass with a hot weight, I think I will have to speed up because we are don't have much time left. Monenzin, 343. Rumen yeast, 345. There basically will be 18 reais per kilo of carcass. When we compare to 0.34 kilos, and what is the return of the income? 41 reais per animal. The dose and the cost of the dose, we will have a total cost in 110 days of 5.56 reais. So if you consider the difference, you will have 36.09 reais. 6.49 per one that was the return on investment. But with this, the fluctuations of the price in the market, it could have been even higher. When you have a lot of technology and that require a little higher investment, the first thing, the last thing that you are going to exclude is room and yeast. The investment is not very high, but the return is very good. So far, everything is good, the large pens. And, and now we are going to talk about Intergado to know what is the investment with this technology being tested. We are going more in depth in the biological aspects. What is different? The large pen will homogenize the way that you carry out the trial and small differences can come up. And the Intergado system is the opposite. All the variations I can try to observe. So this is a V and the, uh, an inverted V when we talk about each one of them. So we monitor the ingestive behavior, the standards of the weight gain curves, I want to understand what is the pattern of weight gain. This is a very labor intensive mathematics. Every time that we look at the, the data, we go to the rough data, it looked as if 
when you are shooting at birds and everything sort of explodes. I almost sat down and started crying. And Professor Alex said, no, you have so many measurements per animal for over 100 days. Me at the station of Intergado, we have that number of data per day. So we got only to this point because a nutritionist worked with a climatologist. If I had sat down with another nutritionist, we wouldn't have reached this far. So, so we are always interested in having interdisciplinary teams. Each animal has to generate an algorithm and only then will you reach the statistical data. Here the data, you can look at this and say, I can remove these outliers, but here you have differences of 50 kilos from one day to the next. Animals can vary from 50 to 80 kilos in two days. What is that? Feed intake, water intake. The animal that were sweating, very strong sun radiation, they can lose up to 10 kilos. And Intergado is a technology and electronic system like the cell phones 30 years ago. You cannot trust what all the data that the program will give you. Algorithms were working. Here, deletion of data. I cannot say this is a outlier. I can remove it. This is a very intensive modeling until we reach this point. And as I told you, the two animals of the control group receiving the same diet coming from the same herd, we always want to have the same items. The difference is 80 kilos. And something that we learned, when you look at the film, the, the video, they, they have pulses of weight gain. Not, this is not something that is quadratic. This is something that we have to study and perhaps change the way we work with nu nutrient requirement. <clears throat> the classical situation, animals that ate more had higher gain. The ones that ate less had a lower gain. And here, two animals that have gains, one much more than the other, and both had weight gain and the same intake. Now about health problems. We, with three days before we are able to detect pneumonia, hoof problems really stand out. So we can better understand how this occurs. When you use this tool, and evaluate the health problems in the feedlot. Let's now talk about eating behavior. In the adaptation period, rumen yeast increased numerically, but not statistically. Everything when we compare with the monensin control, the product S increased the dry matter intake, the feeding time. Rumen yeast decreased the feeding time, while the products M and S increased the feeding time. The product M and S increased the number of visits to the bunk, to the feed bunk. And M and S reduced the intake rate. It, that's kilo of feed per minute. In the adaptation period, in the same intake as monensin, there was a decrease in the feeding time. There's some insights here. There was a decrease in the feeding time. This is a sign that the rumen of these animals are in better shape and they are better, they are able to eat faster. And comparing the other two groups, the other groups that tested two products, they went 
their feed intake was divided into several visits to the bank. A classical function of monenzin is that you will, will not eat at the same time. Or they don't have the whole intake at a single time. And this is one of the characteristics of monenzin. The growth phase, there was no difference in the feed intake. Again, rumen geese decreased the feeding time. There was no effect on the number of visits to the bunker, and rumen yeast increased the intake rate. And here we become aware that there is an increase in the intake rate. The same, the same conclusions as to adaptation period. And now in the finishing phase, M, the product M, reduced intake during finishing, and this was more or less expected within the concept of this product. Rumen yeast again decreased the feeding time, and M increased the feeding time, which was more or less what we expected for a product like this during this stage. There was no effect on the number of visits to the bunker, M and S decreased the intake rate. They divided it again, and you wanted this to occur during finishing when you challenge the animals with a diet that has readily fermentable starch. For human wrist, yes, they had a constant pattern during the whole feeding time. The feeding time was always the same. It can vary depending on the diet for this other product. Initially, it decreased intake, then increased the time. So according to the fraction of the yeast that you provide during the whole afternoon, you expect different intake patterns. So what is the message for these two products? Each fraction, each ratio of yeast products will provide different responses from the animals when we talk about intake behavior. Is this clear, what I just said? And now weight gain. Again. We try to find a pattern to be able to have modeling. This shows that the animals that received treatments start with a higher weight gain. Rumen yeast, the red curve, is higher in the first 10 days in the bunker. And this is in agreement with the study shown this afternoon from the state of Paraná, the highest difference were the first 14 days. And here we can see that in the first 14 days, rumen, rumen yeast is active. Perhaps the weight gain is faster than the immune response. And this is what the pattern of the data suggests. Another interesting point, the M product, a diet with more starch. And when you move to a finishing diet, this was latent in the beginning. And afterwards, it sort of explodes again. I have re responses from the behavior, the eating behavior, according to the, the, the stage and the diet. And this can be a little more difficult with yeast. And if you want to go deeper, you have to talk about phase feeding and the different portions of yeast. Another point that is becoming more consistent, this is what I tell my team. We look at data to find the patterns, but the patterns is becoming the point that we want to analyze. When you use these products, 
yeast-based products, there is an increase in water intake. There's a lot of speculations that this could be an increase of niacin, that is the vasodilation. It's very difficult to find the real reason for this, but it's something consistent with we have found. All the yeast-based products, the same response both phases, including finishing. We were not very happy here because this was started during the winter time. We started in July at the, the transition where there were more challenges, heat stress, but even so the pattern was maintained. And here you can see, we can divide this zero to three zero rainy day one mild two hot and three very hot if it's a very hot day and this it becomes lighter and the pattern is here what are the take-home messages i was afraid that i wouldn't be able to keep the time what are the home take messages? Rumen yeast increase the carcass weight. In the present situation, you expect the return on investment of 6.5 to one here in the state of Sao Paulo. And what I mentioned, different fractions and proportions of yeast lead to different intake responses and even weight gain. These technologies, they can lead to an increase of water intake. Is that okay? And I would like to finish by thanking my research team. And I apologize if I get emotional. We started the project, the first study we produced without COVID, but before COVID, from the slaughtering of the first study until the few last days, we were able to carry out eight trials during the pandemic. For some, it was a personal experience. For others, this life proceeded as normal. Some of them lost some family members, as happened to me. With such a dedicated team I had during the last few years, they never told me no. And if you don't know, I never went to hell, but the opening to hell is the slaughter plant when a large number of the workers are absent and then you have a high level of moisture, and this is where you can become infected. We, uh, we started a visit with one guy that was using a mask, and afterwards he took it off, and he had been contaminated. I think that I wouldn't have been able to do all of this without the help of this team. And even during a pandemic, we are still moving ahead and we doubled our experimental structure. With large pens, with 3,616 animals, we intend to work with cannulated animals. We would like to have a bromatology lab in our facilities. This helped us very much in our control. And again, I was able to achieve all of this when everything was going against you. You don't know what is going to happen to you. So it's a great pleasure to work with this team. And if it hadn't been for them, I wouldn't have been able to achieve this. Professor Alex, that was very strict with the statistical analysis. And with that, this, I am open for questions. If you are not able to remember anything of what I said, 
remember this, that science ends where ego starts. Thank you very much.